This is the inside story of respiration, the breath of life. And here to tell you about it is the one and only Slim Goodbody. Hello, everyone. I'm Slim Goodbody, and I am here to guide you today. I will provide you with lots of information about your system of respiration. I'll be explaining all about breathing in and breathing out. No one can live without it for long. And by the time we finish with this show, I hope that all of you will know you've got a body of wondrous possibilities, undeniably fine. A body of numerous capabilities, busy all the time. Now place your hands upon your chest, and please do as I suggest. Breathe in and let it out. Your lungs receive the air. Many tubes help bring it there. But once air flows into those lungs, its inner journey's just begun. You see, the whole reason for breathing is to get fresh air containing oxygen into your lungs. That's inhaling and getting used air containing carbon dioxide and water vapor out of your lungs. That's exhaling, and every one of the billions of cells in your body needs oxygen. In other words, some of the air you breathe in through your nose eventually has to wind up reaching the cells in the tip of your toes. It's a mighty big job, but it's not too much. You can do it, cause you've got such a body of wondrous possibilities, a body of numerous capabilities, a body, it's a body, quite a body, such a body like mine. We are living underneath a gigantic ocean of air which surrounds the Earth. Another name for this ocean is the atmosphere. Even though you can't smell it or taste it or even see it, it's there and you can feel it when it's moving. Okay, everybody, hold your hand up, take a breath, and blow. Feel that? That's air moving. Breathing is air moving into and out of your lungs. And the most important part of the air you breathe in is the gas called oxygen. Oxygen is essential to life. And do you know why? Because your body must have oxygen in order to change the food you eat into the energy you need. In each and every one of the billions of cells in your body, food and oxygen come together and release energy. How does this happen? Well, think about something that's burning. Oxygen in the air combines with fuel and produces energy in the form of heat and light, fire. Now, food is also a fuel, the fuel of life, which provides energy for your body. But oxygen is needed here, too. As the food combines with oxygen in your cells, it gives off energy which your body uses to move muscles, help you stay warm inside, and do all the other things you need to live. Just like this candle, your cells can't do their work without oxygen. If a cell doesn't get oxygen, it dies. How much oxygen do you need? Well, that depends upon what you're doing. If you're relaxing, well, then you breathe in about 16 times a minute. Later, you can check this out by timing yourself with a clock. When you sleep, you breathe even slower. Emotions also change the rate of breathing. What happens when you get angry? Or when you get a surprise? During heavy exercise, you breathe much deeper and faster, and you're able to breathe in 10 to 12 times as much air every minute. Remember the last time you got really excited? What happened to your breathing then? All together, our lungs can hold about as much air as it takes to fill this basketball.
A person can go for weeks without food and days without water because our cells can store these up. But without oxygen, you would die in a matter of minutes. That's why we have to have it with us wherever we are. Okay, everybody, breathe in through your nose, let it out through your mouth. Air enters your nose, down the back of your throat it goes, and then it flows into a tube called the trachea. Now this trachea divides, and now you've got two bronchial tubes for the air to flow through. Once in your lungs, these tubes you see Keep on dividing, branching out like a tree At the end of all these branches Are tiny air sacs called alveoli And that's a fact Picture with me an upside-down tree. Use your hands and it's easier to understand. The trunk comes down, divides into two main branches And these branches keep dividing into many, many smaller branches The tubes which bring air into your body resemble this tree the trunk is the trachea. The two main branches are the bronchial tubes. The bronchial tubes divide into many smaller branches called bronchioles. At the end of bronchioles are millions of tiny balloon-like sacs called alveoli. These fill with air. Now, in order to suck the air inside, your chest has got to get big and wide so certain muscles help your chest expand and the most important one is called the diaphragm it divides your chest from your abdomen and when it moves down there's room for air to rush in meanwhile the intercostal muscles come into play those are the muscles between your ribs which push them up and away when your diaphragm moves up well the air rushes out along the very same tubes we've been talking about out. But getting air into and out of your lungs is only one half the job that needs to be done. Now your body's got to get that oxygen out of the air that you just breathed in and make sure it reaches each cell inside where it can get traded for carbon dioxide and all that is part of breathing. Oh, yeah. Did you know that your diaphragm is the second hardest working muscle in your body? There's only one muscle that works harder. Do you know what that is? Right, your heart. Now, when your diaphragm moves down and your ribs come up and away, air rushes in to fill up the extra space in your chest. Then, your diaphragm moves up, the ribs come back, and the air flows out. Getting air into and out of your lungs is called external respiration. But the air in your lungs is not yet ready for your body to use. So after external respiration comes internal respiration, which gets the air out of your lungs and into your blood. And once it's in your blood, the air can reach all of your cells. Here's how it happens. As the air flows in, it fills up millions of tiny balloon-like air sacs called alveoli. Everybody say alveoli. Good. Now, if we could see them close up, they'd look something like this. And it's here that your body gets oxygen out of the air and into your blood. Now, there are more than 300 million alveoli in your lungs. And each one is surrounded by those tiny blood vessels, the capillaries. As the air flows in, the oxygen passes through the walls of the alveoli, where it gets picked up by the blood and carried to every cell in your body. Now, when your cells combine food and oxygen, they release carbon dioxide, which the blood carries back to the lungs, where it passes first into the alveoli and then up and out as you exhale. So your heart and your lungs are working together to bring the oxygen out of the air and into the blood. The respiratory and circulatory systems are partners. A pump, pump, pump goes your heart, sending blood on its way. Uh, in and out go your lungs uh, Working hard all day The blood takes oxygen from the air And it carries it everywhere To every single cell in your body After you run or exert yourself, you breathe heavily for several minutes This is partially because the extra oxygen is needed to burn food for muscle energy but mostly it's because so much carbon dioxide gets built up that it takes extra time to get rid of it. 
So your brain sends a message to breathe harder and faster until the proper balance is restored. Now, we are gonna do an experiment to prove that the harder you work, the faster you breathe. Everybody, stand up. Put your hands on your chest. Now I want you to move faster and faster in place with me saying in, out, in, out. Let's see what happens, ready? In, out, 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 all right, now slow down, okay. Slow down, sit down, okay. Take a big breath and let out that carbon dioxide. Time for us to talk a little more about the way your body uses the air that's breathed out when you cough or you ah, 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 shoo, it gets dust, dirt, and germs quickly outside of you. When you've had a long day and you're very sleepy, what do you do? Yawn very deeply. And when someone tells a joke or you see something funny, <laughs> you laugh and laugh and laugh till your eyes get runny. Breathing out gives us the power to speak any kind of language from English to Greek. When your lips, tongue, and teeth all coordinate, you're able to make speech and communicate. Another time it's useful to breathe out is when you need some help and you let out a shout. There is really so much more I could tell you about, but I'll just take time to note one more thing. Breathing out gives us the power to sing. At the top of the trachea is your voice box, or larynx, and this is the way it works. There are two bands of cartilage stretched across the top. Another name for these bands are the vocal cords. Now, certain muscles can move these bands wide apart or close together. As you breathe out, the outrushing air causes these bands to vibrate, and this creates sound, in much the same way as plucking guitar strings sets them in motion to make music. You know, th there's something else I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, yes, hiccuping. Here's how it works. At the very top of your trachea is a flap of skin called the epiglottis. Everybody say epiglottis. Good. Now, when you eat, the epiglottis comes down and covers the top of the trachea so food does not go down the wrong tube. When you hiccup, this is what goes up, goes on. For some reason, your diaphragm drops down suddenly. There's an inrush of air, and the ep epiglottis comes down to cover the top of the trachea. This stops the inrush of air and produces a very strange, strange sound, the hiccup. You know, we've talked a lot about how breathing works, but before we end the show, I want to share with you some healthy hints. First of all, it's very important that when you breathe, your belly move in and out a little bit. Don't force it, but remember, your diaphragm is dropping down and moving up, which pushes your belly in and out. Also, keep your body straight, not stiff. Don't hunch over. Give your lungs the room they need. Your lungs deserve the very best. So every girl and boy, take good care and stay aware that breathing is a joy. Breathing is a joy.